Yes, sir. Just I like to introduce all the uh, participants uh, in this meeting uh, about uh, Jaipur Surgical School. It is a online initiative that has been started by Professor V K Karpur, who is uh, currently uh, heading the department of HPV surgery at Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, Jaipur. Uh, this uh, platform is basically for uh, surgical trainees as well as surgeons from low. and middle income countries this will con be continued every friday at 3 to 4 pm indian standard time uh, we will be having classes from eminent speakers across india in this part today we have the second lecture uh, to be given by professor td adav sir who is a senior faculty at uh, pgimer chandigarh uh, i request uh, uh, dr sikora sir to kindly take over and uh, moderate this session uh, of bioelect injury thank you sir the sadik we can't hear you yeah, yeah. now we got it okay. yeah started experience in bioelect injury when uh, all of us were in uh, sanjay gandhi pgi and probably from there uh, interest also generated and uh, we work in uh, north india where uh, lots of gallbladder are being done and so is the common is the bioelect injury so uh, thanks uh, sadik sir and thank dr kapoor for giving this opportunity so what uh, i have uh, done uh, i i have uh, uh, included uh, some experience some uh, whatever we learnt in the uh, from residency to today's uh, time and uh, some emotional component because uh, i feel this is a very benign disease and uh, lots of problems are still happening and uh, day and night we are seeing a uh, bile duct uh, injury in uh, pgi and uh, all varieties of injuries including bilio enteric injury bilio vascular injury and we are losing patients also because uh, usually patients are not uh, reaching here on time so with that background i have prepared my slide so that uh, we can uh, we can introduce some uh, some culture of safety to the uh, my uh, younger colleagues so i start uh, i don't know why this bar is coming i start by i start uh, by uh, by the uh, statement of our uh, father of the medicine and who started the uh, the saying that first do no harm and uh, if i read the i will prescribe regimen for the good of the patients and according to my ability and judgment and never do harm to anyone the most important for uh, bile duct injury is uh, and abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous so this uh, particular statement it is statement is very very important uh, for us when we are talking about bile duct injury because uh, many of our patient who may not be having uh, symptomatic gallstone disease they have some upper abdominal pain and uh, suppose they go and uh, get a get a ultrasound somewhere and uh, they get a stone the obviously everybody will think this is a gallstone disease causing the problem and they grow for uh, for uh, any type of cholecystectomy because i am saying any type not only lab even more open cholecystectomy our data is almost equal so and then they have a this life threatening complication so the aim of uh, all the, all this prevention of bile duct injury is uh, to embed the culture of the quality and patient safety and again i am repeating that our aim is prime am nano sir so i always tell my residents that uh, the the treatment should not be more deleterious than the disease process that should be them still there will be many times something will happen which 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 might not be in our hand which will happen because of the circumstances because of the disease process because of the because of the some judgments taken which are uh, which are unavoidable but still if you are ready for all these things then probably our complications will be lesser so uh this is uh, just to remind the uh, younger generation that don't think that uh, this is something which uh, doesn't happen in any hand so the she is uh, she is elderly lady had a bilio vascular injury and you could see she is on hemodialysis and uh, on ventilator so all these things are happening after uh, this uh, small so called uh, minor surgery what uh, people tell and uh, this picture is of another maybe little bit lucky patient where a uh, patient had a bilio enteric injury and uh, you could see uh, this re explode duodenal injury was also there so uncontrolled bilior enteric fistula re explode and feeding gymnastomy rear cp stenting and about 6 month it took uh, took uh, for the patient to go home properly so and uh, this is the final scar so if uh, somebody is younger patient 
then what will happen so this is the this may be the luck, lucky patient uh, where where the the life has been saved and the quality is acceptable so these are the these are the things which happen so i was thinking whether uh, whether i should write this slide is biliary injury really cause of concern today because as we say that when experience will increase this the injury will be lesser uh, but uh, are we really uh, getting that uh, that type of expected outcome uh, because laparoscopy started but so i will show some uh, some incidents and uh, this is very recent data uh, as kapoor sir said that we should be talking like a teacher student not push more data but these are the these are the different publication very recent even in 2021 and we know that uh, cholecystectomy is the most common procedure performed deliberately i am not writing lapro alone because in north india still we see lots of open cholecystectomy and bg b bile duct injury has been a concern in the open open era and even it, today it is a very big concern and uh, laparoscopy revolution when people call that laparoscopy has revolutionized and it, the 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 gallbladder uh, cholecystectomy became gold standard laparoscopy cholecystectomy became the gold standard most probably open cholecystectomy many resident may not have seen the open cholecystectomy uh, in their hospital for some time until it is it is converted so, uh, and and this also goes to the to the figure this figure is also very recent that bile duct injury incidents in topmost center where where uh, where everything is documented is about 0.15 2.36% and uh, what is this data is uh, in in the same article when alas of surgery published same article it has been mentioned that is under reported so problem is there and the complication rate that includes a small bile leaks and other small uh, ssi and uh, other complication if you include all complication so overall it becomes 1.6% and it can occur with lap open and even lap to converted open cholecystectomy many many uh, uh, patients come where injury have occur after the conversion so it is very very important and this is also important there are multiple uh, publication now that even if you save the life today the overall mortality is in comparison to the same age group patient general population it is a quite 8.8 fold so as a as a as a young uh, doctor as a young resident what minimum a surgeon should be knowing when they are starting their career so first thing they should know that biliary injury are preventable and any preventable complication we should try our best to prevent so most of the biliary structures are atrogenic so most of the biliary structures are atrogenic and uh, so it should be it should be considered preventable and we should try our best to prevent these complications complication laparoscopic injury in comparison to open are little bit different and uh, they are usually missed during surgery and uh, their uh, presentation is early many maybe within within one week people will come with the something and a spontaneous closure of the fistula maybe because of the lots of energy being used and uh, because of the magnification many of the people are not aware the tip temperature of the harmonic scalpel and uh, monopolar cautery which are the two most commonly used what we we see in different uh, different uh, seminars and uh, this thing that lots of uh, harmonic scalpel is used but if you ask the tip temperature from the residents we are seeing in the exam they don't know and we also must know that our uh, the magnification is about 2.5 to 3 times so if you are seeing a dip, 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 distance of 1 mm from particular important organ or 2 mm or 3 mm actually it's not so you are very close so that also should be taken into consideration so that's why probably there are some sort of injury to the to the to the tissue and that's why other than sharp cut injury which can happen by the seizure when energy source is not being used so spontaneous closure is lesser and these structures because of the depth perception so i am not talking about 3d and all because of the depth per per perception the higher structures are common commoner it is commoner we are comparing which is common commoner than the open what are the risk factors so to start with first of all what is our duty as a registrar At all of us should know what are the risk factors for the conversion as well as for the bile duct injury so we know that acute inflammation in the gallbladder so there are controversy about acute cholecystitis but what what i want to say that history of acute inflammation means acute cholecystitis and severe chronic inflammation when patient is coming 
and then congenital anomalies. Little bit I will talk about acute and uh, acute inflammation, but congenital anomaly, you know that uh, most of the bile, uh, biliary anomaly, normal, normal biliary anomaly, which is uh, this one, uh, right and left coming nicely and uh, joining the, uh, making a confluence with the, with the left, right anterior, right posterior, that is close to about 50, 50, uh, 6, 7 percent. And all these anomalies can happen in your patient. So our mind should be should be should be like this: that any of the anomalies which are mentioned here might be present in a patient. So we should be always be we should not be going like if this cannot happen here. This can happen. So until unless you see properly, you document that you are uh, not cutting something with this bile duct. You should not be thinking that this can this cannot happen because the anatomy is like this. So this is very very important to understand. And this is one of the most common causes of bile duct injury. Other risk factors which are documented, which we also face, are male gallbladder. By tradition, people call it obesity. Obese person is prone to have a bile duct injury. And then chronic liver disease. Chronic liver disease where uh, there, there would be collateral, but uh, not as much as it is, uh, as it is uh, in the uh, extrahepatic portal venous obstruction and uh, and ncpf and in ehpbo we definitely say never do laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy because it might be life threatening but in chronic liver disease in in a, in an era of uh, so many gadgets one can attempt and do it but please remember that still there can be more chances of bile duct injury in comparison to the to the to the normal patient but i was talking about acute choli acute inflammation so history of acute cholecystitis. That time in our, what early period people talk about 72 hours. If it is not been operated and it was history of acute cholecystitis, history of acute pancreatitis, history of acute cholangitis, palpable gallbladder and clinical examination, and then a small contracted gallbladder GV on ultrasound, thick wall gall, uh, uh, gallbladder on ultrasound, and gallbladder stone disease with common bile duct stone disease. Because of CVS uh, and whether ERCP has been done or not, if there is a stent, so all these things because of the this 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 common uh, 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 bile duct stone they trigger inflammation in uh, around the around the bile duct, so it, it distorts the anatomy. So these are the high risk patients, and why we should know this because if you are knowing that these are the high risk patients, probably you would not like to operate in the early uh, period of your life and you will always have in backup somebody uh, Dr. Kapoor has mentioned cholegeography means a, a colleague might be there to give the at the last uh, last point that yes you are going right or if there is a need one can be coming for to get to help you on the table. So this is about acute cholecystitis and a risk of bile duct injury. This is uh, from the uh, increases with the severity of the inflammation. So acute severe cholecystitis or empyema gallbladder or a, a person who has needed uh, uh, admission and uh, uh, IV antibiotics and all like uh, uh, Tokyo guidelines uh, 13, which was revised in 18. So people say 13 guideline is much better to stratify the risk of the uh, bile duct injury in a, in, a, in a patient where there is there has been acute cholecystitis. So it is early early people call it now 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 uh, why I have given some time here because lots of literature is available about uh, there is no difference in the outcome and there are some re reports where people it has been mentioned that BDI has been commoner and morbidity has been more in a in a pa patient with the chronic uh, uh, patient who are minor uh, con conservatively and then gallbladder surgery was done, laparoscopy was done. But early, the, for that matter, we should think early. This is Canadian study uh, classification. Early is less than seven days. Delayed is less than uh, after the seven days. But what is recommendation? The recommendation is that the cholecystectomy should be done in mild acute cholecystitis in within 72 hours. Moderate to severe uh, cholecystitis, there is uh, enough evidence in the literature that it should be delayed uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. As I said, there may be many opinions, but this is what is the most of the people uh, uh, feel like that. Then coming to the what are the factors? These are the to make up our mind. Then what are the factors in the in the anatomy and in the disease process which make the gallbladder by, uh, prone to uh, bile duct injury? So patient related factors. So if there is a large impacted stone at the neck, 
it's not i am talking about mirji this makes the absence of the cystic duct to so please look at my sketch so there is almost no cystic duct because of the normal physiology the moment a uh, stone obstructs the bile duct will dilate and there will be a distal dilatation so if stone doesn't fall back it is impacted then uh, the, the length of the uh, like a gerd the length of the uh, length of the cystic duct is gone and it widens so uh, there is absence of the cystic duct and when you are going to dissect in that area and pulling the gallbladder too much toward the right side upper and up then probably there is a tenting in the common bile duct and your dissection you um, see my marking dissection goes around the common bile duct and there is a chance of bile duct injury same happens same happens in a major syndrome so if you see the please see the x-ray impacted stone which is not the fistula and it is narrows the common hepatic duct and almost no 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 cystic duct and same physiology happens and callus triangle is frozen as uh, every time we read in textbook our teacher tell that you cannot find the uh, separate cystic duct you cannot find separate cystic artery everything is frozen and in that case there is a chance of bile duct injury if you are overdoing in the callus triangle rather than uh, 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 be, be very careful to uh, to not to go around that uh, the uh, mr uh, stasberg uh, the great person about bile duct injury he described that there are error traps so we have been taught in infundibular technique fundus first technique routine intraarticular angiogram why i am saying that i am one, one, one by one i will take up this issue and perspectual error these are the three four factors which are technical factors and which lead to the bile duct injury and then let us see whatever literature says and what experts say so first is a pro a procedure related, related factor it is said that you go and dissect in the in the in the uh, infundibulum area and um, uh, stasberg says it is error trap one because in that area there is yes. lot of inflammation yes, yes because of the inflammation so there is a there is a uh, there is a problem of conceptual problem and the cystic duct is becomes parallel to the common bile duct because of the dense adhesions and it comes close to the common bile duct so during dissection there is a there is a chance of the injury oh, so yes, hidden yes. cystic duct syndrome is oh, a term no, no, no. to yes. this particular problem and this uh, this uh, to, so in pendicular okay, yeah, yeah. following alone right, there right. can be a problem right. so because of the dense adhesion and as i said the common bile duct is mistaken uh, uh, to be as a cystic duct so many times people say second cystic duct so if if you are having a cystic duct where you have yeah. pain, and you second year second semester first semester exam diya tha so aap uh, i think sir talking somewhere else. so um, <laughs> so uh, when you are finding another yeah. duct and you clip and, duct, and you think that this is the second uh, uh, cystic duct kon kon hai is that first cystic duct was a common bile duct and second cystic duct which we are thinking is a is a real cystic duct so this is very very important and we always say that we cut the specimen and look for two ducts so this is very very important and sometimes the, because of this particular uh, problem there can be a be injury to the right hepatic artery which we, uh, david dobs described classical bile duct injury where right hepatic artery and duct both are uh, this thing so very top down cholecystectomy and uh, many of our teacher in open coli era when i was registrar in uh, our my parent medical college then i came to sgp jai that time it was anti grade cholecystectomy was uh, as a rescue operation when you are not able to proceed in that area and then you come and do anti grade uh, but, um, uh, but there is there was an artic article published where the this technique was kit size so i i looked into this particular technique and if you see stem bilio vascular injury this is from center of uh, uh, two 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 good centers one from us and one from uh, 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 netherland and they found that uh, this uh, virio vascular injury is commoner when you are doing a top down technique but literature doesn't support literature doesn't support and i i have looked into this uh, very recent uh, literature and there were this is the review of the 100 studies of uh, 11 studies of about 1100 patient to summarize in a nutshell that there is evidence toward the safety and efficacy of this particular technique but there is a catch when 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 cbs is not achievable which is the the most uh, accepted method of avoiding bilateral injury then this top down technique can be worked but i have made uh, a uh, uh, i have uh, i try to make a, a, a sketch for that uh, maybe 
so that uh, top down technique when, what what we tell that when you are coming from out to uh, uh, from above to lower down then then after after dissecting about uh, four five four three to four to five centimeter you should more you are coming closer to the to the rear sulfur uh, sulcus where you think that right portal pedicle is there because the the anatomy is distorted so you to shift toward the uh, towards the uh, uh, gall bladder and uh, dissect between the cystic plate and the gall bladder rather than going in the same area and if you do this then probably this particular problem of uh, injuring the right portal pedicle is uh, is uh, avoided and uh, uh, th that is the that is the evidence also available that it can it can work to save the bile duct injury and complete the gallbladder whether you do by laparoscope or you do by uh, convert uh, to open it do it that depends on your expertise so intraoperative cholangiogram as i said and uh, this is again from the Strasbourg publication where it has been said that the there is the, there is a interpretation of the data interpretation in the cholangiogram because of the logistics and uh, he also mentioned that uh, when you rotate the pictures, uh, you find that there is a that injury has been done uh, done in a, some sectoral duct. The problem only is this: that if you are not able to read the anatomy and you are trying to puncture blindly, then there is a chance that you might puncture the common bile duct. However, if you are uh, clever enough, you are you are puncturing where it is like a infundibulum. It is opening in the gall bladder. Not, not seeing the cystic duct and clamp uh, gallbladder in that area and push the uh, contrast probably this problem might be avoided but literature is literature is uh, uh, supporting both uh, uh, some somebody says it has saved somebody says it doesn't but uh, this is the review of about 14 studies and uh, it has been said that benefit is maximum in a setting up acute cholecystitis or if there is a history of severe acute cholecystitis then probably it works well so we cannot uh, say at this stage that it is a uh, hundred percent beneficial and we cannot also ignore that uh, it has helped many times so our uh, our uh, um, uh, our practice we are not uh, doing routinely but if you are doing routinely your center is uh, doing routinely then probably chances uh, you can do it when it is required so these are some final comments that uh, that is uh, from the sage that excellent way to identify injury but not to prevent the injury that is what i was saying that by the time you puncture you are you might be able to identify the injury but your puncture also might be doing some minor injury to the to the to the bile duct selective policy is preferred and there is no difference in the rate of minor and major bile duct injury once you are doing intraoperative cholangiogram very few the people who are proponent of not doing it they said very few small stones in a today's era of imaging can be missed because of there are certain surrogate markers of the common bile stone. So the moment you see toward that marker, you are you will investigate more. So uh, uh, it's very difficult to miss the stone and uh, that's why cholangiogram may not be required. And if you are having a very small stone, you are not going to do uh, uh, explore the CBD. You might probably uh, do uh, ask your colleague next day to do something. So that is very, very important. So intraoperative infrared nowadays, lots of uh, studies are coming. So we have recently uh, procured the instrument. So uh, uh, I just saw our uh, colleague uh, doing it. I have not done it. But history is, again, studies are heterogeneous. Bias is toward the use because people who are using, they say that it's very good. There are, there are certain factors as a registrar, you must know it, that BMI affects, age affects, elderly people, inter uh, result may be, interpretation may be difficult. And severity of inflammation is very, very important. To, uh, that it is also affects the, uh, the interpretation and the surgeon's experience. So if, if you see that in a severe uh, cholecystitis, the detection rate of uh, common bile duct and cystic duct separately has been in the tune of 40 to 70 percent. So may, maybe about uh, same number of patients you won't be able to differentiate. So as a, as a, as a, as a sum, summary, we can say that this cannot be used as an alternative for the CBS. So critical view of safety is the most important. And if you are having a uh, this uh, infrared operative near near infrared cholangiogram, don't think that you can avoid uh, proper dissection. So coming uh, though all the factors are related to the surgeons because surgeons prepares everything, but uh, there are certain factors which we you must discuss. And uh, there is a learning curve effect. There is a psychology of the human error. The by fact is that. You are not seeing uh, 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 the, the picture by your own eyes. You are seeing an image or an a video 
which you see in the monitor and then there is a capacity of your brain to interpret that video and then take a decision and it is it is it is presumed that everybody has a different capacity to interpret it so that's why there are some people who are uh, who are prone to more injury there are other who are prone to less injury so there are people who talk to everybody like uh, 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 everybody says before clipping you ask your resident you ask your staff nurse take support of everybody am i right and anyone of me if raises hand then probably you should look into this stop think and go again like people talk stop so there is evidence that initial initial few few operation usually number of 13 i don't know from where it has come but in the initial 50 50 operations chances may be more in comparison to the uh, and become more experienced but it is also evident that after lots of experience also people have caught by that injury so another uh, very important uh, sorry very uh, one 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 more publication came way back in uh, 2003 and uh, by lawrence and way and they said that 93 percent of the bilateral injuries are perceptual error it was published in analysis of surgery and they i wanted to say that suggest that technology is faulty uh, because of the image interpretation and the surgeons are uh, for know this thing this might be good for in a, in a, in a when you are in the court by, by, by the injury, it might save you, but this is not the correct thing to interpret it. And we have to be very careful about interpreting this data. So how to prevent? So having discussed all those things, I have some technical tips which I will give. It might work. It might uh, not work. So so first, first duty of a registrar is our beginner is that for everybody, for all of us, is history of jaundice, if it is there, history of acute cholecystitis, acute pancreatitis, male gallbladder, palpable gallbladder, I am repeating, ultrasound, small contacted, thick wall gallbladder, gallbladder packed with stone, you are not able to hold the gallbladder, and stone impacted at the neck, which will produce mucosal, obviously, and frozen chylates. In the beginning, one should avoid doing this surgery. So, how can we prevent? We have to have an adequate training, go to different centers, whatever you do, and appropriate equipment. It is also evident that a 30 degree laparoscope is better and you can mm -hmm. have a better visualization of common bile duct. Mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. You should avoid mm -hmm. difficult cases in the early period mm -hmm. and identification of the difficult cases is very, very important. So these are the some methods. Technical tips is we always use four, four ports and traction the uh, i will give traction then clipping then panic when there is a bleeding uh, uh, kindly uh, kindly switch off your mic please can we put a mics to mute please can we put a mics to mute Dr. Pius, can you mute the mics of others? Sir, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm getting disturbed. So I will go to the uh, the technical. There are the, the problems in the technology. Is it there? It is there, but okay. He is muted now. Yes. Sir. So uh, there is there is no tactile sensation, and obviously we know that blood is a very good light absorber, so it absorbs the blood. So the moment there is some oozing, some this thing, we should try to suck it out and put a guard piece so that uh, you can your visibility is clear. And decision, as I said in the beginning, that decision is taken on reading the image. So one has to uh, practice more and more so that a decision is not a problem. And there is some personality issues also mentioned that in the literature that there are some people who are very dogmatic. And uh, in Greek mythology, they call it surgical hubris. They are a hubri. They don't want to take second opinion. They have uh, not, not ready to convert on time. They said whatever I am doing is correct. They have more uh, bile duct injuries than the people who are a little bit considerate, listen to their colleagues, juniors, staff nurses, and they help in preventing bile duct injury. So dealing the uh, culture of the safety in the mind of uh, training is the duty of the teacher. And we should uh, always, uh, 
I, I still remember in SGP Jai, uh, one of our teacher will be coming and he's standing on our side and he will say, show me the proof that you are not clipping the bile duct. So even if you are clipping the cystic duct, uh, we have to tell him that, no, no, these are the reasons I'm not clipping the bile ducts. And that was, the, I think, very nice way of uh, uh, drilling, the, drilling the safety in the mind. And meticulous dissection, as I said, no use of cutting in the toilets until only the structures are clear. And fully aware that when to get help. Help is not only senior, if senior is not available. In our department, Dr. Harjit is there, our uh, junior colleague. We always ask him, come, Dr. Vikas was there. Anybody, anybody can help you. And sometimes even staff nurses tell you because they are seeing so many cases. They have seen all the injuries. So they will tell you, you are wrong, doing wrong something. So there is no ego problem in, uh, because at, at the end, we are all doing for the patient. So knowing well when, when, back, when to back away, because when we are not able to do is there are other 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 way of uh, uh, doing the gallbladder surgery not only conversion you can put a tube you can do partial cholecystectomy as described by stars but I, i'm not going through all details but you can come up to the cystic duct and then uh, take a suture in the in that area by opening the gallbladder rather than proceeding if you are not able to dissect properly and uh, as I said, readiness to switch over to another operation like cholecystectomy, partial cholecystectomy, and change the technique. Means when you are going, you are uh, 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 or lap, you can convert it. And this is very, very uh, important to know this. So technical tips, as I said, always please go ahead with four ports technique, standard ports, and pneumoperitoneum. We use open technique. You might be, if you are very competent, you might uh, take all the precautions. You can use... Uh, Close pneumoperitoneum. Nowadays, there are multiple uh, things are available. You can yeah, uh, uh, use VG scope, but this is what uh, for the basic standard is that four ports because <coughs> the chylus triangle, this opening of the chylus is not possible <coughs> without using four ports. So fundus will be outward upward, chylus will uh, sorry, in fundus will be outward and downward, and that is how. But after little uh, little bit of dissection, you can uh, open the chylus triangle. So like posterior dissection is very, very important. So lift the gallbladder and then dissect posteriorly. Go up to the area where you can see the liver. Sometimes you can see the artery from behind. In anteriorly, there may be lots of uh, infection. So critical view of safety, as I said repeatedly, I have used in my talk. It is the most important, most accepted way of, uh, way of uh, preventing bile duct injury. And we should be seeing only two tubular structure between the liver and this thing. Then only you are creating the critical view. So at least see the duct opening. If you are not able to do this, at least duct opening. Opening should be seen, opening into the common bile duct like a funnel. So if you are even able to achieve that and you stay close to the gallbladder. So I always say, and I have read in the literature only and taken lead from my senior teachers that lymph node, which is very, very important. Cystic lymph node is a surgeon's frame. It tells you that here somewhere is the cystic duct. So don't go medial to me. That is very important. And if this, this is available, use it. So this is the this is the critical view of safety. So critical view of safety, I just, uh, I had a discussion listening. I, I, I used to listen to the discussion that it is not possible to have it. And that's why I try to see the literature. <laughs> and in, two, in, two in one million cases, bile duct injury has occurred with the CVS was used honestly and religiously. But only 1.5 in 1,000 where when fundibulum uh, was used and uh, CBS was not achieved. This is also implementable about 85 to 95 percent and undesirable effects of overdoing CBS is not record, no record available. So in a, to summarize that CBS is achievable, it should be used religiously and if not, then other techniques like in other techniques should be used. So this is picture from the same, uh, same uh, person's uh, publication, Strasbourg publication. So his stars were only wrote because of the this discussion. I was I listened some European discussion also that CBS is not something which is uh, very important. Then again, he has re-emphasized after uh, about 14 years of giving CBS that this is very important. This uh, there is evidence that it uh, prevents bile duct injury. So look at the bed before last bit of gallbladder is removed. This is very important. It is not mentioned in literature. So you can see that some sectoral duct. So if you are finding some tubular duct coming, there is no vessel after cystic artery is, uh, is uh, clipped. So you must see it and it might be a small sectoral duct, which might be a cause of concern. Uh, if, if bile leak occurs, it, it will leak like anything. And this is 
people talk of Rivia Circus. So this is the Rivia Circus and you draw a line uh, from Rivia Circus to the segment four base. And if you find that if there is a, you should be lateral to that particular line and there should not be uh, posterior discussion is very, very important. Hug the gallbladder wall, not the CBD. No cautery used. Little bit of oozing is acceptable until unless uh, two structures are clear. Cystic lymph, lymph node is, if you is very important. And if there is a pipe bleeding, just put a gauge piece, release the fundus traction and press it and wait. It will stop most of the time. So this is very, very important. As I said, hug the, hug the, hug the gallbladder, gallbladder like this. Clip application, it is neglected area. So just crossing, I, I saw, see somebody just cross the clip and then you think that clipping has been done. That is not correct. The superior border of the cystic duct should be hugging the concavity of the, uh, of the clip. So that is very, very important. And just crossing, and if your clip should be parallel to the CBD, if you see the green line, it should not be just crossing the cystic duct and it should not be angular. So it partial bilduct uh, clipping can be avoided. So these are the these are the different ways uh, to do this. And uh, uh, Sari sitting here, so he gave a golden rule of uh, five, uh, five C's. Cartery very careful use. Uh -huh. As I said, you must know uh -huh. the temperature. Cystic uh -huh. duct, cystic duct, CBD junction to be seen. Triangle. No, don't divide until unless you are uh, you are uh, you are uh, uh -huh. uh, 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 convert when 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 you are not confident. Be confident, but avoid being overconfident. So in the judicious suit of cautery, cautery, the, the energy transfer from the clip. So metallic clip you are using, even if you are away and your instruments are not properly insulated. So it can transfer the energy unknowingly and it can produce the delayed structure. So this is uh, my final uh, slide. So final, you should not be going with the intent that this is a minor procedure. Please remember, it's a major procedure. Excessive cautery should be avoided. Misidentification should be avoided by sticking to the principle. You stick to the uh, gallbladder neck. No panic on bleeding. This is one of the commoner cause of the bile duct injury. Early conversion was required and follow the rule of five C's. Prepare proper and supervised training is the, uh, there is no, 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 no alternative to that. So if you take some lead from the uh, follow up the principle of aviation, when there is visibility is not clear, the, the pilot takes the plane away. So that is what is, uh, is required in our, our uh, laparoscopic surgery. If you are not able to clearly see the runway, then we have to go for other procedure, other runway like partial polycystectomy, tube polycystostomy or conversion. So this is very, very important and uh, rather than going and doing some damage. So again, I am repeating, so our aim should be prime and non nocier and uh, lesser options are tube polycystectomy, subtotal polycystectomy and conversion to open. So just if you are doing a lab, I was just in, a, in one discussion, some senior faculty was saying that uh, lab uh, subtotal polycystectomy is dangerous and lots of things occur. So these are the summary of the 30 studies uh, uh, where bile leak in 149 out of 188 patient retained stone 8 and morbidity has been about 9 and mortality 1. So this is very, very important to know that when we are doing it, we should clear the uh, remained cystic duct of the stone, try to uh, suture it rather than putting a stapler and uh, clip may not be adequate and uh, the prerequisite is that the retained CBD should not be there by flushing by doing any method any any technique can be uh, there but there is evidence for the safety of the technique and it is said that this, this avoids bile duct so sages has given this six principle all of this uh, principle i have already described so not uh, going into again but uh, for the resident point of view they can uh, take these slides and then they'll consensus also have have followed the same same principle what we have already discussed in detail so with this uh, i i uh, i uh, take these slides to show that uh, uh, yeah, any center you are working going to work please have some vascular clamps and try to pack rather than uh, this is a patient lab to convert open conversion and uh, lots of uh, these uh, crushing clamps have been applied in the porta uh, so uh, uh, this patient in him uh, is on the table are being in, uh, induced so we should not be doing this so summary is uh, as a surgeon we are the people responsible because all those things we we have to we have to follow we have to do we have to identify the risk we have to take the precaution so everything boils down to us only so we have to be very very careful and uh, again i am repeating dr kapoor said college geography and i i am again 
trying to summarize the same thing if we need to consult the, for the conversion see yourself in your mirror nobody can teach you the safety you have to we have to uh, uh, see on your, um, on your in our mirror our 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 own uh, face and uh, analyze and decide how to go about that so this is the uh, i would like to summarize by this uh, particular uh, uh, this um, uh, editor editorial uh, comments by uh, Kenny Dulemo in a uh, article by uh, way where he said that perceptual uh, error perce perce error of perception is the cause for all major bile duct injury so he has said that do not use do do not use an excuse to avoid responsibility accept the class 3 injury as a as an error don't make it a foundation for the malpractice surgery not a mindless rock paper and scissor game hallmark of safety is appropriate care and judgment don't use it as a crutch to lean upon so these are the things i think these are i cannot um, summarize better than this and uh, if you follow all this the bilateral bile duct injury can be uh, minimized so two three lines from me as a conclusion that most of the bile duct injury are preventable gallstone disease is a benign condition we must always remember this polycystectomy is not a minor procedure our mind should not be going like this because our attention is less and human life is precious and we must remember always uh, uh, thank you all for your kind attention and uh, thank you uh, uh, dr kapoor sir and dr sadik sir to give me this opportunity thank you Uh, can you hear me, TD? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, is it better now? Ah, so, thank yes. you very much for your beautiful talk in addressing all the issues from anatomy, pathology, and the technical aspects, and also a lot of, uh, as you said, the culture which has to be developed around doing a cholestectomy. So, let's. Uh, get some comments and questions from uh, the participants because I think this is the opportunity to ask anything or everything at this point of time. So don't hesitate. Please post your questions and if you wish, we can even ask the question in person. Uh, so can you just... Uh, while somebody, uh, we have one question. So, Titi, can you see that? Yes, sir, I am seeing. Uh, we, uh, we use mm -hmm. ICG on daily basis, but we have difficulties when we use it in cases of both acute and chronic cholecystitis cases, not delineating anatomy as expected. Is there anything that we can do to improve in uh, setting or use of delineate anatomy better? So, uh, as I said, I have uh, not used, but what literature I have mentioned, what literature suggests that, uh, as you said, in a acute uh, setting, acute chol uh, cholecystitis, it is, it is, uh, uh, delineation rate is about 40 to 70 percent. So, that might vary in that. But uh, uh, I think uh, uh, our many of our centers are using, uh, uh, in, 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 in India also, they are routinely using. Uh, when somebody delineates the anatomy, it looks very nice that everything is seen. But uh, I don't have personal experience. So can I take that question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we use uh, and we've been using uh, ICG for last three, four years now. So Dr. B uh, Bidur, I think, from Kathmandu. Uh, what I would say is some of the th key things are the timing of giving ICG, the dose of ICG. And this, and also the uh, type of equipment that you're using, the company of which it is being used, because all this has a bearing on the visibility or the way you visualize the biliary structures. We have found that the best way is to give at least four to six hours prior to uh, when you want to do an ICG. And we have a call store system. So for that, this works best. The you may wonder that that means that it cannot be done selectively when you want to do it in a particular patient. So if you are wanting to practice ICG, then it should be given electively to all patients uh, prior to cholecystectomy. And as I said, four hours before. And how do you choose that? So you have certain high-risk groups, like Dr. T.D. mentioned, that patients with 
prior history of acute cholestitis thick walled gall bladder male patients these are usually known to have difficult gall bladders and conversion is often required in these patients as per literature and in these if you want to define the anatomy you should preemptively give icg there are reports that you can give it at the time of surgery also 30 minutes prior to or during surgery but we have observed that the visualization of structures is difficult there is another method of direct icg if we can do uh, by injecting into the gall bladder and we are doing one project one of our students is doing a project on that it has its own limitations also but that can be done at the point when you want to identify the anatomy and use that method to look at the biliary structure what dr tt mentioned is when there is inflammation it is difficult to see but in our see we've studied about 60 plus patients of acute cholestitis and we have found that at least one structure and that one structure usually is a common bile duct can be visualized in more than 80% of patients so if even if you see a common bile duct you know where not to go and then you draw a line parallel to that and stay on this side so these are some of the things you can do to improve the value of icg uh, cholangiography so uh, dr td while other questions are coming uh, or oh, there is a question there steps to take where there is a stone impacted at the hartman's pouch and it is difficult to grasp the gall bladder so i think um, uh, uh, if if you have a, if you have a, you are not able to grab the gall bladder because the uh, distended gall bladder because of the mucosal or it may be tilted empyema sometimes conservatively it works then first and foremost thing is we should uh, aspirate the gall bladder so uh, aspiration of the gall bladder will collapse the gall bladder and if it is not very densely impacted the gall bladder falls back in the in the in, uh, sorry stone falls back in the gall bladder so even after that if it is not able to able to have uh, stone dozen fall back then giving a incision to the gall bladder and uh, uh, releasing the stone will be about 1 to 2 mm extra space in the cystic duct to apply your clip and all and that that works uh, uh, very well but we have to be very very careful in both these things that we must be 100% sure that there is no chance of uh, Uh, incidentally detected cgb because of any type of sus suspicion should not be there then we can aspirate directly we can puncture the puncture the gall bladder and that gives a lots of uh, uh, working space not only during uh, during a uh, uh, dissection in the colloid but also when you are taking the gall bladder out so i think aspiration is a very uh, very very important thing and then milking the stone and if it doesn't fall back then probably putting our incision in the gall bladder and uh, taking the stone off and then you can later on take the stone you putting in a bag and out uh, anything more sir is uh, dr gai lamine has raised his hand so maybe we can ask him whether he wants to ask and then there are three more questions in the chat dr gai lamine yes hello hello professor kapoor yes thank you thank you for the opportunity and uh, thanks to professor yada for this outstanding uh, presentation uh, my question is about um, uh, the the in case of very long um, cystic duct so that is running very close to the common bile duct uh, what should be the the better strategy i mean uh, should we dissect as far as possible to clip or should we just put the clip in the neck of the gall bladder in order to to avoid an injury of the common bile duct the other question is about when we have some difficulties to grasp uh, the gall bladder for example when it is distended uh, could we consider a uh, transcutaneous function of the gall bladder in order to to facilitate the prehension of of the gall bladder thank you very much yeah pretty quick co- uh, yes. because there are three four more questions and we would like to close exactly at 4 so i i have uh, second question i have already answered that we can aspirate the gall bladder and it decompress and that facilitates the dissection 
So I think the Dr. Giles, that is the thing. What your first question? If uh, cystic duct is running very much parallel to the common bile duct and it is very close, dense, uh, densely adhered to the common bile duct, then it's not probably advisable to go and uh, try to dissect as much as possible because you might uh, create some some sort of devascularization and uh, devascularize the common bile duct. However, if it is, we can dissect it and see that it is coming as uh, as it uh, runs in the chylids, that it is coming uh, in the neck and going toward the gallbladder and it is almost perpendicular or some more degree to the common bile duct rather than uh, uh, parallel, uh, uh, going parallel to the common bile duct, then it's, uh, it's uh, advisable to go as uh, close as possible and being very safe, uh, take it uh, uh, cystic duct. Because the common, as more you will leave, there are, there are chances that in the future, they might develop some sort of cystic duct stone. <laughs> There are three, four more questions. Uh, uh, TD, Dr. Vihar Kotecha from Tanzania. He's a senior surgeon in Tanzania. So, uh, uh, Dr. Vihar, I have already uh, uh, given the road, uh, role of anti-grade uh, cholecystectomy that, uh, as I said, it is it is uh, when, when you are not able to achieve CBS. Th this is what is the literature suggests. When you are not able to achieve CBS, then being very careful, but we can start anti-grade cholecystectomy, come down about uh, uh, 3, 4 centimeter, 4, 5 centimeter, then start dissecting in between the cystic plate and gallbladder wall. So that you are not doing that injury to the to the portal pedicle, which is some, uh, one, some one article had described. But there is a literature that anti-grade has efficacy, it is efficacious and it is safer in comparison to the going blind, in fundibular dissection. However, CBS should be our first aim. Dr. Abu Rahmane's questions uh, about clips not being available. Clips not so you can ligate, ligate uh, b b if not if clip is not available, you can ligate or you can uh, suture if uh, one is competent in suturing. So suture ligation is also possible. You go around the cystic duct and just ligate uh, b b the cystic duct. Some people practice routinely. And Dr. So Omar's question, I think you are going to cover it in the second part, how to manage a bile duct injury. Yes, so yes. We, will, we will wait for that. Yes. And I think uh, retrograde cholecystectomy, Dr. Kotecha's question. Same, uh, that is same, sir. That is retrograde is same. Uh, same thing. Is it anti-grade? Some people call, some people retrograde. Means top-down technique, uh, taking the gallbladder fundus down before the uh, before uh, doing the cutting the cystic duct and cystic artery. And Manas wants to know if the area of the cystic duct is gangrenous. Area of cystic duct is gangrenous. So it's a, it's a, basically can happen in acute cholecystitis. And uh, that area is gangrenous. Then you have only one option that you can either uh, put a uh, drain and a stent. If, it, if you have no place to suture, then you put a drain and ask your colleague to put a stent. And in the meantime, you can do medical sphincterotomy. If gangrene, I suppose that if gangrene is means that you can even, can't even take a good suture and then you cannot go in the cystic duct uh, CBD uh, suturing it. So to my mind, this should be the uh, most appropriate uh, option. And a small duct in the bed of the gallbladder? So three, uh, any duct less than 3 millimeter or close to 3 millimeter uh, can be clipped. If it looks like better, more than that, then we have to do a cholangiogram. And we have to see whether uh, it is uh, connecting to the main system or it is not. If it is connecting to the main system, nothing is required. If connect, not connecting, then we have to do some sort of cholangiogenesis. Endo loop. Endo loop we are not using nowadays because we can tie. But endo loop as uh, it, it is the answer to the earlier question that if, you, if clip is not available, yes, sir. Doctor Sadik, any concluding remark? Any one or two take home messages for the young surgeons? I think uh, you know most of the things have been uh, very nicely covered. Uh, I would still reiterate the fact that uh, you need to follow the basic tenets. Look at the landmarks. I think landmarks is very important in gallbladder surgery. And uh, we all know those, but always look. So the whole practice when I do a cholecystectomy, first step is to identify all the landmarks. And for me, those are the lymph node, cystic lymph node, the ruvius sulcus, and then the line drawn from the ruvia sulcus to the base of segment four. So once you draw the landmarks, that's fine. And I think the second important thing is time out. So when you want to do the uh, clipping and division of the structures, you must take a breather 
ask all your colleagues junior or senior whoever is scrubbed with you that is this okay to go ahead and clip and divide i think it's an important practice which you should inculcate uh, in your practice and one more caution thing which i would uh, put forth is although cvs is important to prevent bile duct injury but we should not fall in the trap to establish cvs in all patients especially if there is difficulty in dissection in the hepatocystic triangle because in order to achieve a critical view of safety you may end up doing an injury for which you are trying to prevent so adopt other bailout measures if the dissection is difficult yeah thank you very much i think uh, uh, we will close at 4 so before that i would like to introduce dr piyush vashne who is there on the screen he is the faculty coordinator for and he makes all the schedule dr kailash probably is busy he is the student coordinator just two or three requests that uh, all uh, participants please log in with your name and country we would like to know from where you are especially if you are from outside india and uh, if you want to read more about safe cholecystectomy please send me a mail i have put my email address in the chat vkkapoor.india@gmail.com i'll send you the soft copy complimentary soft copy of my book safe cholecystectomy which has been published by one of the uh, laparoscopic surgery societies in india uh, and uh, those who are in india uh, they can send me their postal address i'll try to send a print copy i can try to send it abroad also but i am not sure whether it, it will be possible but soft copy i will definitely send so i would like uh, uh, piyush would you like to thank the speaker and moderator yes sir i, I think it was a very nice session especially for the young surgeons i would yes. thank uh, professor sikura sir as well as uh, professor yadav sir for sparing their time and contributing to the this online platform thank you sir thank we will close at 4 uh, exact so we will Thank make you, a routine that we start at 3 and and at 4 sorry i could not log in at time today uh, because of some university meeting okay thank you tedi sir sir sir, 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 sir i am i am shahid raman from bangladesh oh yes yes can you can you hear me yeah yes, you yes, want sir. to ask anything or say anything dr shahidur he is a very uh, i i had i had a few comments regarding this program yes i am from bangladesh shahidur rahman i have lately joined in this program because i am not getting the chance uh, and the last part that i have heard from your discussion very very much promising and important discussions you have given a lot of ideas about the surgeons to solve their problems in the regular practice thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, you very much you. okay i think we will close thank you sir thank, thank you. you and uh, thanks to dr avinash tank and his team himanshi for providing the technical support thank you very much